Good morning. I'm Jessica Matthews, president of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. It's a great pleasure to have you all here and to welcome you on this snowy morning and to thank you for joining us so early for what we think is going to be an important and busy and informative day. Um, my uh, pleasant task this morning is to introduce our two uh, opening speakers, Ambassador Kenichiro Sasai and Ambassador Cho Mio Tut, to open this conference uh, on how the United States and Japan can work together to help support ongoing development efforts in Myanmar. Over the last few years, the political and economic transformation of Myanmar has been remarkable. The government has released political prisoners, introduced press freedoms, held the parliamentary by-elections in 2012, unified and liberalized the foreign exchange system, passed a foreign investment law, and established an independent central bank, and that's far from the complete list. The international response, not surprisingly, has been enthusiastic and sometimes almost overwhelming. Um, offers of aid and support and technical assistance have poured in from around the world. This aid will, will help Myanmar meet its many challenges, roads, power plants, schools, health clinics, training, institutional development, and the like. But aid like this from so many different sources can also be very, very difficult for recipients to handle. Donors sometimes have conflicting goals, uh, and trying to respond to all of them uh, can divert attention from the tasks at hand. Uh, so it's tremendously important that the aid that is being made available be used wisely and coordinated effectively. Two of the most important partners in this are Japan and the United States. They are particularly well positioned to coordinate their support for Myanmar's development. And if done well, that coordination would not only serve the country well, Myanmar well, but would also serve as a model for other international donors. So there is a dual uh, payoff um, from that effort. I'm therefore delighted that we were able to uh, hold this conference here at Carnegie today and uh, that our organizers have brought together a wide range of distinguished panelists to help us understand the intricate economic and political conditions in Myanmar and the scope both today and potentially of U.S.-Japan coordination. A great many people have had a hand in organizing today's event. I want in particular to thank those whose financial support made the conference possible uh, and also our Japan program overall, including JETRO, the Japan Foundation Center for Global Partnership, and Mitsubishi Corporation America. We are uh, very grateful to all of them. To start our discussions during this conference, we're privileged to have, as I mentioned, two of the key ambassadors, uh, Ambassador Tut from Myanmar and Ambassador Sasai from Japan. Before taking his post as Myanmar's ambassador to the U.S., Ambassador Tut served as amb ambassador to the U.K. from 2011 to 2013. He's also served as deputy permanent representative uh, to the United Nations in Geneva, and prior to entering the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he was a colonel in the Myanmar military. Ambassador Sasai has been Ambassador of Japan to the, to the United States since November 2012. Um, as I think all of Washingtonians know, um, uh, a vigorous uh, presence here in, in Washington. Before coming to Washington, he served as Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs and has served as the Director General of the Economic Affairs Bureau, Director General of the Asian and Oceania Affairs Bureau, and Chief Japanese Negotiator for the Six-Party Talks on North Korea. After that position, everything else is easy. Uh, so please join me in welcoming both ambassadors to Carnegie, and I'd like to, to ask Ambassador Sasai to begin uh, with his opening remarks, uh, after which I understand he'll be able to take a few questions 
from the audience, and then we will turn to Ambassador Tut to close this opening session. So, Ambassador Sessa. Uh, thank you, uh, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm honored uh, to be here on this program with uh, uh, Ms. Matthews and also uh, the, uh, Jim Schaff and uh, Bill Kram Nell of the Carnegie. It's been a great pleasure to be uh, coming to speak. And also, I'm glad to see Ambassador Tatu since you came to Washington. It's always good to see a friend. And also, um, it's a good opportunity to come to know better about those people who are interested in this very important country, Myanmar. And right off uh, from the beginning, uh, I like that, let me say, I like the title of this conference, Supporting Myanmar More Effectively. If you think about it, you know, this is not a neutral title. And obviously, uh, as is the case with the other academic conferences, you know, supporting something reveals a desire to help. I think this is a very good reason to bring us together this morning. And I think everyone in this room would like to help and support Myanmar's development and transition to democracy, not by uh, preaching from above but working together on the ground. I think that's a very important thing for us to do. And I was the, uh, talking to an American the other day. He's a, a movie buff of the thought. He knows a lot about the movie. He said that in his mind, the old bomber, as uh, represented in American and British films, was mainly about hardship and war. He couldn't think of one light-hearted uh, Western movie that takes place uh, in Burma. No British comedy of manners, no romantic comedy such as King and I, uh, we find in, in Thailand case. And he said even a few uh, movies set in Burma that weren't about the war, life was uh, portrayed as difficult certainly not as grim as a movie for Cambodia, like the killing field and so forth. But uh, for Japanese like me, uh, Burma and Myanmar uh, is a country uh, which you remember as a very warm and religious. And uh, there is a famous Japanese uh, movie. And, uh, harp in Burma. I think mo I don't know how many Japanese uh, audience here to know, uh, today, but uh, most of Japanese know about this movie. This is about the movie uh, of of Japanese soldier who defected before the end of the war and became uh, a Buddhist monk, and uh, he uh, he took a trip uh, to uh, play for the soul of the dead whether it is Japanese or Burmese or whoever it might be. And, and so uh, when we think about Myanmar, Burma, we always think back of the history and, and very warmly think about the Burmese people. And uh, they have come a long way in terms of uh, political history and economic development. We know that Burma is a country of huge potential in terms of population, natural resources, and uh, there have been too many years lost, as we have lost two decades in Japan, for example. And Myanmar, Myanmar has also lost some years. But it's now time for Myanmar to begin the process. It, it's a long way to go still. But I think the important thing is that uh, things are moving now. Uh, what we need to is to support and help on the same ground, working together with Burmese people. Now, if you look at the uh, current situation, especially this year is a 
epoch-making year for Japan. Year 2014 is uh, 60 years of anniversary of establishing the diplomatic relations uh, uh, between Tokyo and Yangon. And, uh, and also, uh, we know that Myanmar is going to be chairing ASEAN uh, this year. And, and even on the part of the United States, you know, uh, we know that the uh, year 2012, November, uh, the Myanmar President Tenzin uh, visited the United States. And May last year, and year, I'm uh, sorry, the year 2012, it was President Obama visiting Myanmar. And last year, it was uh, President Tenzin coming to the United States. So I, I guess that all the, to putting all this together, this year is going to be a very important year, uh, not only in terms of uh, our relationship with, with Myanmar, respectfully, but also uh, in the context of Japan-U.S. Uh, collaboration for the regional stability. And uh, we all know that there is now enormous challenge in Asia-Pacific, and including ASEAN, and, and also, uh, you know, the, uh, some of the conflict around the region. And, and in, doing, in doing all the efforts necessary to stabilize the region, ASEAN's role is very much on the rise and important. And in that context, I think Myanmar's role is even more important in several ways. One, I think, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in terms of ASEAN integration. And we know that ASEAN is now coming up uh, with the uh, regional integration, uh, not only economic, but also political, even security policy domain. The fact that uh, Myanmar is playing a very important role as a chairman is symbolic of where ASEAN is now heading for. Uh, we know that there have been much discussion in this country about uh, uh, Myanmar's human rights and democracy. And to be honest, I think uh, there are some different views how to approach. Obviously, the uh, United States was candid and direct in addressing all these human rights and democracy issues over the years. We are not uh, as direct, possibly, as the United States might have been. We know that the democracy takes time to be rooted, whether it is initiated or developed or matured. If you look at the example of all the other ASEAN countries or even some other countries in Asia, it's not one or two or five or ten years time frame. It takes some decades of framework. So important thing for us to encourage all these indigenous recognitions of the people and government uh, to, uh, on the importance of moving ahead on the democracy. But we are also different in a way that uh, uh, China approached to, to Myanmar and the region. They didn't talk much about democracy and the human rights. I thought, I think we have obviously some different position compared to China, but uh, I think it was good for a country like Burma now recognizing the importance of moving ahead on both human rights and democracy, and also the economic development. But having said that, I want to say a, a few things about, uh, about uh, what we hope uh, Myanmar government would do an establishment. We all not know now that the democracy and rule of law, national reconciliation, economic reform, they are all taking place. It's good to see all this taking place. But we also recognize there are still some insufficient you know, uh, introductions of the uh, rule of law, new legal instrument to make democracy advance more, and also the, uh, some economic infrastructure building, and including uh, some of the introductions of uh, new economic laws to make the country more open and transparent. So having, and also we all know that uh, there are still agenda remaining on the reconciliations with uh, minority. Although 
looking at the issues long-term perspective, we know the, how long the Myanmar government have come. And uh, there are still some remaining issues uh, to be addressed. But still, uh, the important thing is that there are positive development on all these fronts, and that we need to encourage those uh, development uh, to move further ahead. And uh, we, uh, we know that uh, the decision was taken and the courageous movement was supported by the people of Myanmar, what we need is to support and help. Now, let me tell you some of the things Japan has been doing these days uh, on our policy uh, toward uh, Myanmar. Uh, we, we are determined uh, to be engaged in Myanmar's nation-building efforts, both government and private sector, uh, which include our own uh, and, uh, plan to develop the uh, industrial park like Tilawar, which would create the employment opportunity for Myanmar people. And we have also signed a bilateral investment agreement. And this is the first full-fledged open and free investment treaty Myanmar has had with uh, foreign partners. And also we have decided uh, to provide official development assistance in the order of 1.5 billion U.S. dollars. And, and also, uh, we have appointed a special envoy. I, I, I guess most of you know this gentleman's name, Mr. Sasagawa. He's very, also famous uh, for advancing uh, you know, exchanges uh, between Japan and the United States. But he was appointed to be ambassador uh, to support all this reconciliation between the Burmese government and minority group of the region. We, on our part, uh, has announced that we are ready to uh, provide $100 million assistance to promote this recon national reconciliation. So both on the economic and political front, we are doing, to, uh, sub doing a lot to support all this positive development. Now let me uh, talk a bit about uh, what uh, we expect the United States. We know that uh, there has been s still some cautious note here in capital, you know, other places in terms of the speed of the progress of Myanmar for the further democratic advancement. And there are still some sanctions remain and so forth. But I think uh, the, if we are serious about to uh, encourage the economic development, which need to be the basis for further economic, sorry, uh, political progress, I think it's a time for the United States to review the current status of sanctions and to make uh, uh, Myanmar business people uh, to be able to come to the United States and do a business more freely. I think it's a, it's, a it's a good time for the United States uh, to look at the issues and uh, taking into account the progress on the uh, democracy on the part of Myanmar. Now, it is obvious that uh, we have uh, common strategic interests, and uh, not only Japan, U.S., but also uh, other countries in the region, including India, so that uh, there should be more uh, connectivity. Connectivity, I'm talking not only about trade and business investment, but also political connectivity to advance these values of democracy and human rights. And I think the uh, Burmer, uh, uh, Myanmar, uh, could be a harbinger and open up a new horizon uh, to, to, to get all this... Uh, you know, affiliation and partnership with democracy. And for that reason, I think uh, we would like to see a very active discussion taking place on how to help and support Myanmar. And thank you very much.
please. Go ahead. My name is Jim Chope. I'm a senior associate here at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and in charge of our Japan program. And uh, the ambassador has agreed to take a, a couple of questions. We have we have time for, for just a few before we turn to the ambassador. But, so if, if someone would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and uh, we'll have a microphone uh, delivered to you. I have a question. Is this one better? Okay, this is even better. I have a question in the back. The, in the red? Go ahead. So should I? Go ahead, please. Please let me know. Who. Oh. Hello? Yes. Hi. Um, yeah. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Thanks for I mean, yeah, uh, allowing us for the questions. Yeah. My name is Injin Nai. I'm from uh, Voice of America Bami Service. Yeah. Um, I would like to know that the um, Japanese um, investment situation comparing with the uh, Chinese, you know, uh, investment in in Burma, especially how I mean, Japanese government are trying to you know compete with uh, Chinese. Mm. Yeah, business in Burma. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I don't have the specific figures uh, on my uh, table at this moment, uh, but but I think the uh, I want to say this: one, we are not really going to compete with China, and we don't think uh, the relationship uh, uh, the, with China in a competing way. I think uh, uh, it it is good for China. Uh, to be a part of all this uh, uh, the support uh, to uh, to Myanmar, we know traditionally China has a close link uh, and relationship with uh, Burma. I think it's good for a country like China to be continue to be a very important part of this uh, economic development and eventually be a good partner for the democracy. But uh, for the time being. I think the uh, the focus naturally on the part of China might be or should be uh, on to support uh, uh, Myanmar's economic development. So uh, the, we like to see a, a continued flow of Chinese interest and investment in the country. But at the same time, I think uh, the it is a monop it is not a monopoly of Chinese business and investment. So obviously, uh, if there are more divergent uh, investment and business coming from the other countries, especially uh, uh, countries like, uh, you know, ASEAN and India and Japan and the United States. That'd be great. That would open more of the uh, opportunity for, uh, for, for, for Myanmar. And, and in that way, I think uh, it, it's the same as the other ASEAN countries. So, uh, uh, we would welcome uh, continued Chinese interest, and but I'm going to say that there will be more investment coming from uh, from uh, uh, from Japan to uh, Myanmar, and I think uh, obviously uh, in terms of the future opportunity, I think Japanese uh, people and business are looking at uh, uh, Myanmar more as the potential place to further uh, for further investment. And, and and for that, uh, uh, and it is a general trend. I think Japanese business trend, and that, that there should be a more business connection with uh, uh, Myanmar, not only Myanmar but also the ASEAN as a whole. And there is this debate going on how we would strengthen this connectivity. And I hope that uh, China will continue to be a part of that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Kobayashi with uh, Kyoto News of Japan. Um, I'm just wondering, Ambassador, if the Japanese government is already considering with the U.S. government any joint plans, any specific specific plans to help Myanmar, especially in the economy or uh, empowering women. Thank you. Well, I think that's the uh, that what uh, some of the uh, strategic agenda we are working together with U.S. government these days uh, in the context of uh, how we would strengthen uh, the economic development of ASEAN as a whole, 
and uh, especially when it comes to Myanmar, I think uh, we are talking more on how we could do the project uh, together. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Vice President Biden uh, came to Tokyo uh, the, uh, some time ago, and we had agreed to uh, open a new uh, uh, economic assistance uh, policy dialogue. And uh, I guess around the time when uh, President Obama uh, will be visiting uh, Tokyo on later April, uh, the, all this uh, uh, the uh, agenda for uh, collaboration on development assistance to the region will be high on agenda. And uh, in that context, I think it is relevant and very much uh, opportune uh, for both countries to to strengthen its uh, strategic collaborations uh, uh, to uh, support uh, Myanmar's development, including economic assistance program. And on that score, uh, you know, this uh, role of women is also high on agenda, uh, honestly. And uh, uh, I know that the, uh, in Myanmar, and, uh, in, you know, um, outside, men seem to be uh, boasting their own power but going back home, I think women are strong, actually controlling men. I think that we know that tradition from our own experience. But as you move on and to open the country more uh, to the outside world, I, I believe the role of women will be more in the forefront of your own society. So one aspect of our assistance program to, uh, to Myanmar is obviously to help all this increasing role of the women. How we would do that, I think that is still under discussion with the US, USAID and, and the US government. Perhaps you could expect more to be coming in, in, in the years ahead. Ambassador, thank you very much. Unfortunately, uh, I think we ought to move on uh, with the program, but, but thank you for helping us open this, uh, this event today. Thank you. And now, please, let me invite Ambassador Tut to the podium. Well, I would like to thank uh, Ambassador Sai Sai for uh, encouraging and understanding Myanmar at, at uh, this kind of a time. Uh, first of all, uh, Madam Jessica Matthews, uh, for His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Kanichiro Sai Sai, Emperor of the Japan of the United States, our uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I'm honored to be here to deliver remarks at, this, at the opening sessions of this uh, important event. First, I fully support this meeting presumption that the political and economic transformation underway in Myanmar is an important strategic opportunity for the United States and Japan with the belief the development of Myanmar contributes to a stable and prosperous order in the region. Geographically, Myanmar is situated between India, the world's largest democracy and second largest population, and China, the world's largest population and second largest economy. Myanmar is a nation endowed with huge amount of natural and mineral resources, while having a unique diversity of eth ethnicities and cultures. As you all know already that Myanmar is also on ASEAN member state, whereas ASEAN has a total population of 600 million playing central role in evolving regional architecture. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to update you of recent development in Myanmar reflecting my president's recent pu public statement. In his statement, the President informed his fellow citizens that his administration has achieved a series of success to a greater extent in terms of democratization, national reconciliation, ceasefire, economic policies, people-centered approaches, and freedom of expression, media, and rights. But the President has also shown his honesty and sincerity to the public by admitting that a number of difficulties, challenges, and constraints have been unavoidable during his reform process. Due to these difficulties, 
tangible results have yet appeared in some areas, but the government has now set clear goals with the determination to achieve them. In fulfilling the long-standing needs and demands of the people, words are really easy to say, but actions would be much more difficult in practice so as to meet high demands and expectations. The government was able to overcome numerous obstacles during the past two and a half years, thanks to the cooperation and collaborative works of domestic strength, parliament, political parties, political groups, civil society, business groups, the armed forces, ethnic armed groups, and other ethnic groups, and more importantly, the public. These reforms would not be possible without the freedoms and openness, as well as assistance from the international community, resulting from government political reforms. With regard to peace and national unity, through constructed Constructive dialogues among negotiators of government and ethnic armed groups based upon sincerity and willingness, willingness for peace, a nationwide ceasefire agreement followed by political dialogue would not be in a far distance, but in a foreseeable future. In addition, the government has already initiated fundamental reforms in the essential social development areas of national health care and education. And at this juncture, I would like to inform you of the recent good news that is the resumption of World Bank assistance to Myanmar after its long break of several years. In this connection, the second Myanmar Development and Cooperation Forum was held in our capital, Napido, last January to energize efforts to ensure effective coordination with our international partners. An outcome was to establish a national health care system for all the people, regardless of rich or poor, with the cooperation of the International Development Associations of the World Bank Group. Likewise, the national education reforms for our future generations are being discussed among government agencies, civil society, education policy groups, and experts. The government is also encouraging the role of civil society by recognizing their opinions and demands for our open and free society. Regarding the land issues, which are complicated with political, economic, and social concerns, the government has instructed the state and region governments to take care of the matters raised by the affected people and their advocates. Data concerning landless families are being collected in order to resettle them according to township development plans. Another hot topic is constitutional reform. In this regard, the president clearly stated that a healthy constitution must be amended from time to time if necessary, and provided following three suggestions. First is to be in line with the main demand of the ethnic groups, that is, a union based on federalist principles including equality, self-determination, ethnic rights, and preservation of their culture and languages. Second is to be in line with democratic attitudes and values. The third concerns qualification of the political leadership. The president would not want restrictions being imposed on the right of any citizen to become the leader of the nation. At the same time, he suggested that the people of Myanmar will need to have all necessary measures in place in order to defend our nation, national interests and sovereignty. In terms of economic development, Myanmar GDP grew at 6.3% in 2012 and 6.5% in 2013. The main drivers of the growth were increased gas production, services, construction, foreign direct investment, and strong commodity exports. However, the country's poverty rate remains 26%. Ladies and gentlemen, under its ASEAN chairmanship this year, Myanmar hosted the ASEAN Foreign Minister Retreat Meeting last month in Myanmar. During the meeting, discussions included ASEAN's effort to speed up community building and ASEAN integration and to move forward to the realization of master plan for ASEAN community. In addressing the issues of common interests and concerns, the South China Sea matter was also focused. In this regard, the minister reaffirmed ASEAN six points, principles, and the importance of maintaining peace and stability, maritime security, freedom of navigation, and in an overflight above the South China Sea. Now I would like to turn Myanmar's relation with the United States as well as with Japan. 
The good news is its relation with both nations seems very positive and constructive. Regarding the Myanmar-U.S. relations, during the past two years, the visit of President Obama and President Ustain Singh took place one after another, while normalizing the diplomatic relationship between our two countries back to the ambassador's level. And that is why I'm standing here. Uh, President Obama's administration has eased most of its sanctions, waiving restrictions on the provision of financial services, authorizing new investments by Americans, and permitting the import of all products from Myanmar except jadeite and rubies. It has rendered its full support on the multifaceted reform process of President Hussein Sain's government. Its calibrated engagement policy, in other words, action for action, becomes proactive, though not a full swing yet. In terms of trade and investment, the U.S. government is creating more favorable conditions which enable its people doing business in Myanmar competitive. The latest development was that the U.S. XM Bank began offering credit for trade with Myanmar in early this month. That provides U.S. businessmen export credit insurance, loan grant guarantees, and direct loans for credit with the export sales to Myanmar. I believe that such developments would improve trade flows between Myanmar and the United States and help reintegrate Myanmar into the global economy. And the, uh, regarding the relation between Myanmar and Japan, uh, I would like to echo Ambassador Sasai's statement. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the establish, establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Last year was also significant that the visit of Prime Minister of Japan, Mr. Shinzo Abe, to Myanmar and my President, Uteng Singh, to Japan took place in May and December, respectively. During the visit of Prime Minister Abe, Japan's assistance to Myanmar totaling 91 billion yen was announced, in which 51 billion will be yen loan for regional development project for poverty reduction, urgent rehabilitation and upgrade project, infrastructure development project in the Lawa area. And the 40 billion yen will be grant aid and technical assistance for water supply in Yangon City and for human resources development scholarship. Moreover, at the bilateral summit meeting, meeting in Tokyo last December, Prime Minister Abe announced to add a total of 63.2 billion ODA yen loans for four projects in Myanmar, the areas of railways, water supply and irrigation. Previously, by encouraging current Myanmar government's reform, Japan cleared 3.58 billion in debt early in 2013, which had been owed by previous governments of Myanmar. It also provided a bridge loan to Myanmar to cover outstanding debt to the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, totaling about $900 million. That created favorable conditions to allow these banks to provide new development loans. These are some significant assistance of Japanese government to Myanmar among its numerous supports. And I thank Japan for that. Uh, the United States and Japan have been rendering their bilateral assistance and support to the people of Myanmar through various ways and means that certainly contribute towards Myanmar's current reform and democracy and all around development of the nation and people. At this juncture, I would like to convey our profound gratitude to the government of the United States and Japan for their kind supports of Myanmar political and socio-economic reforms. In conclusion, I would like to express my sincere best wishes for all of you present here today and for the conference to end up with fruitful and mean meaningful outcomes. And more importantly, to find out new ideas in filling up the remaining space of needs of the people of Myanmar with additional assistance and supports Thank you very much.